Uh, while uh, David sets me up, yeah, my name is Ronnie Berry. I am not Dr. Sam Atwell is supposed to do this. He's a good friend of mine, and his wife has uh, health problems, and uh, I couldn't tell him no. <laughs> but uh, uh, in 1998, the first <coughs> conference, Sam was awarded Cotton Researcher of the Year. He was doing work then for BASF and uh, No-Till. And, uh, and uh, my brother and I, we started no-tilling in 1984, still do a lot, and Sam has always been my go-to guy, my mentor, and, and you know, and, and helped me through this. Yeah, uh, we operate uh, two farms. We work together, uh, Ronnie Berry and then my son Chris Berry, and uh, we have probably 6,000 acres, and uh, we're at, uh, between Popper Bluff and uh, Corning, Arkansas, up and down 67 Highway. Uh, David showed you where we were there on the northeast corner of the Boot Hill. And uh, we do pretty well a rotation from rice to soybeans, and it changes from year to year. We just go with the commodity prices and you know what you know we feel like we can make fit the, the best. And uh, as David, you know, indicated this, and I'll try to show you. Uh, uh, what led us to this uh, you know when uh, when we started farming and then not long after that we started raising rice in the later years well uh, <clears throat> and then like I said we started no-tilling in 1984 well uh, we would uh, roll the straw down and uh, we would try to go in there and drill the next spring and uh, I'd check the fields Four or five days later, check the field again and it'd still be wet. My neighbors would be working. You know, with that straw was keeping the ground wet. And also, there was more than one year, we had stand losses and uh, from uh, insects and uh, cold ground. Where we're at on the north end of the rice belt, temperature plays a, a lot of times in, on uh, us getting the stand. <clears throat> and so, we started burning along about 19... Uh, uh, 99 in that uh, neighborhood and uh, by doing this it, it, it slowly weeded our uh, trips down uh, <coughs> through the year uh, <coughs> we uh, just looked at it at a point that uh, uh, do we need this little bit of uh, value we're getting out of the straw or do we need the economics of it to you know cut out a lot less equipment you know our trips and uh, extra, you know, every time you add an extra trip or something, you have to add an extra guy or mo you know another tractor. And it takes more time, and uh, <coughs> and all that. Uh, and so we just went into this at a slow pace. And then uh, uh, my son came along uh, in the, around 2002, and uh, he is the one that you know integrated this what we do today in more of a of a system that we uh, uh, actually run on and i'll uh, show you more about that you know like I say uh this is a the, how the previous way and it would amount to six to seven trips you know almost uh, every time i mean it is just uh, my brother used to run the four-wheel drive tractor disking and and he always had a, a funny comment he said well, I got to feel good because I know it's uh, seven trips from now we can plant beans <laughs> or rice or whatever. <laughs> All right, and then uh, uh, going from the old way into the new way now, this is a, a general idea of what we have a set process we do now. Uh, we run a, a diamond harrow in the fall to fluff the straw. And uh, we run a, a, a disc around the perimeter. We want a good perimeter, so uh, we uh, we definitely don't want any fire escapes. <laughs> and then in, uh, in the spring, we'll run a turbo till or a diamond disc, and uh, uh, and then we run a better, and then the planter, and then uh, and <laughs> it lets us uh, uh, run at a fast pace. Uh, we do almost all our farm on uh, uh, minimal till, no till, stale seabed. Well, uh, by doing this in a, a less tillage, our, you know, our theory is to uh, 
always, uh, at the much as you can, have your soil ready to plant. That way, when you have a wet spring or you know or carries on, when it's time to plant, you can be planting instead of working the ground. <clears throat> and uh, by doing this, uh, we've been able to cover a fair amount of ground with uh, not much help. It's Chris and I, and we'll have uh, uh, one to three helpers. And then, of course, we employ um, uh, more, you know, truck drivers and things during the fall. Uh, and then the, <laughs> it lets us, it just lets us proceed at a, a, a fast pace. And then uh, I'll uh, touch on some of the things that's, uh, you know, actually come into play. You know, of course, a lot faster, half the cost and time. And then we have a definite uh, visual uh, uh, noticeable in the red rice and off types because, like I said, we do a perimeter around the field. And uh, you can go in our rice crops the following year and uh, you'll see a definite uh, pattern. You'll have red rice and off types in that dish strip. And where we burn, you'll, you just, it's not there. And, and you know, it's very visible in almost uh, every uh, field. And uh, we noticed that uh, right off the bat. <coughs> and then uh, uh, Chris is going to talk on the uh, furrow irrigated rice later on. And uh, been some issues with the stubble interfering with water traveling down the, the furrows. Uh, but uh, uh, that's more of something Sam has run into. And I told him I'd just uh, uh, relay that on to him. And then on the harvest and yield, uh, uh, we feel like by what little bit we're losing on uh, the straw, we're gaining it all back on uh, timeliness and being ahead of the game. We have an earlier crop, and uh, overall, our yield has been up there. <coughs> and then this is the actual process that... Uh, we try to uh, stick to uh, when we do our burn. Uh, as soon as we can after combining, we try to get a good clean perimeter around the field. We don't want to burn nothing of anybody else's. And then we do our best to get the humidity and wind right. Uh, actually, the actual timing of the fire, I learned that a lot from <laughs> Sam's brother. He used to burn forest service uh, land with a helicopter and he learned it from the Forest Service on the time of day to set your fire, when to quit, when to burn, when not to burn and uh, we have to stick to this pretty well because we farm up and down 67 highway and we don't want to create a, a traffic jam or a wreck and you know cause some uh, serious injury so we'll have a lot of days that we might burn the east side of the highway but it may be no telling how many days before we can burn the west side because we strictly want to do it where the weather's right. And then, uh, like I said, we always fluff. We always use something to fluff the straw, whether it be after immediately after the combine or later on in the year because we want to get air to it. We definitely want a good, hot burn. And uh, we use a burner. Uh, we have uh, propane torches mounted. Uh, we put them in the receiver hitch the pickup and let it stick out and that's what we used to use for a long time and then uh, Chris has now come up with the actual burner and uh, it's uh, you mix uh, two parts diesel fuel and one part gas and it's got an igniter and it, it uh, lights a distinct flame and uh, you can get a good flame going even if you're a little damp or something you can get a good uh, flame going and so we, we tell our guys, we go through this every day. Go whichever the way the wind's blowing, go down there and get you a back far. And we preach to them constantly. Wait on it, wait on it. Let it, you know, let it burn back. And then uh, we uh, do a, a perimeter around each patty. And by doing that, it creates a, uh, if you sit and watch it, it creates a chimney effect. And the smoke will actually go right up and above and it won't bother anybody as bad to where if you just go you just turn a guy loose 
and you send him to one side of the field, it'll just, the smoke will lay across the land and, and you know, go for quite a ways. This doesn't always work, but it uh, works a lot. It, you know, it's worked for us uh, a lot of times. And uh, uh, my, our pictures, I don't know what happened here. Uh, I was going to, this goes on to the timeliness. Uh, by burning the straw, we have a good, clean field. We're able to run at a fast pace. Uh, Chris put this together. We can't see it all now, but uh, it's a sunflower planter out of a John Deere air cart. It's 60 foot wide, and he runs at 10 mile an hour. He plants 80 acres in 10 in a, in an hour when he have a, we have open fields. And uh, you know, before when we was issue, working with the straw. It didn't matter how many trips we made across that field, you you could not you know you couldn't uh, run this kind of a, a speed. It just you know just you just had to slow down and you know and let uh, let the machine uh, handle it. And uh, uh, and this is our uh, Chris runs a spray rig, and uh, before you saw that, it's a spreader. And what I want to emphasize on that is since we've got our operation down to two trips. We, uh, uh, at one point, we were operating uh, 9,000 acres with Chris and I and four guys. And we were done planting on time. And uh, we decided to, to drop part of it. It was 55 miles away from us. And so we dropped 3,000 acres. And now we're down, we're approximately 6,000 acres. <clears throat> and we're doing it with four tractors. And we have Chris and I, and we have two full-time guys, and we have a part-time guy, and of course we hire uh, truck drivers during the fall. But by doing this system, and it being fast, we uh, we also do all our own application. He does the spraying, I put out all the fertilizer, you know, the, even the pre-flood nights. And so, you know, it gives us time to, you know, you know add that in our operation. Or the other way, you know, it just, uh, it wasn't possible. And, uh, you know, timeliness is the thing. We feel like the quicker, you know, my motto is quicker is cheaper. Once you go there and do it and be done with it, you don't have to go back. And uh, uh, like last year, everyone knows how, uh, uh, or in our area, it was an extremely uh, wet spring. It was hard to get anything done. And by using this system, we were completely done planning May 24th. And uh, this coming year, uh, we should hopefully even beat that because right now, as we we're here today, of course we had a beautiful fall. We got to burn early. Uh, our entire acreage is ready to plant except 200 acres. We're doing some uh, land work on. And uh, you know, any other way, uh, if we're trying to save the straw, there's no way we could be in that position at this state. And uh, you know, I can't, uh, I can't sit here and tell you that I like burning, because I hate it. It's the worst thing on the farm that I, that's to be done, but we just feel like with the economics and the, where we're located, it's just something that we have to deal with. Uh, otherwise, we couldn't operate to this scope with uh, uh, little guys or less guys and, uh, and be tireless, because uh, uh, regardless, by keeping that mindset of keeping your land ready to plant work down instead of worked up, we can be on time. When it's ready to plant, we roll out. Uh, we have those two, six, I have a 60 foot drill and Chris has one. He'll plant uh, rice and I'll plant soybeans. And so it's just the other way, we'd have to have more help, more tractors, and uh, we, we just couldn't make it work. It's just the fact, the economics of it, to uh, to make the whole system work. And uh, that's a, about the size of it. We do use a stripper header. Uh, you know, we get a good burn by using a stripper header. But uh, with uh, the way row rice is coming along, uh, they not that might not be the thing in the future. But uh, we've done that for several years, and uh, we uh, also we have a. Uh, our entire operation 
is all on tracks and uh, that and you know it, it eliminates any rutting in the field or it really cuts it way down and uh, also to combat this we never plant our levees we tear them down before we harvest uh, we harvest a 40 acre field in a circle uh, if we, if we cut a 40 acre field in between the levees it takes us three hours if we cut it in a circle we cut it in an hour and a half uh, in the course of a fall our grain carts uh, use a fourth of the fuel that they would normally chase in the combine uh, in an 80 acre field we use an oval we cut from the inside out like a racetrack we make a path to go to the truck we make a path to come back to the combine the operator never has to guess where we're at he comes to us, he loads the grain cart full, unless it's muddy, he goes to the truck. He knows which road to go out, he knows which one to come back in. Ends a lot of confusion. It's just another concept in making it fast and, you know, and making it as simple as we can. And uh, that's, a, that's a, a quick rundown. Uh, I don't know how much time we got, but... Uh, Plenty of time for questions. Yeah, just ask any questions. Your your reasons for burning uh, or not burning. Or? You know, I'd, I'd like to say uh, I dabbled on this in years, but uh, the prescription tillage side of it to just do two trips from rice to beans or the same way from beans to rice. Uh, Chris infused that in our operation when he come along. And we, we just pretty well stick to it. It works for us. You know, it just works for us. And, I, you know, when you talk about organic matter, I'm a firm believer in that. So, like I said, I started no-tilling in 1984. Uh, I have some uh, dry land, and on it, I use cover crops and uh, strip till, and it's definitely working for us. And so, I am a big advocate of no-till. And... Uh, when Sam got me to no-tilling in 1984, I said, when I retire, I won't be working any ground. But the way it's turned out, due to the cold, wet soil and, uh, and the being, on, being fast and being on time, uh, we reverted to this system because it works for us. And, we, you know, we can do it quick with a little help. What grade are you on? Uh, we have all types. We have zero. We have uh, fourth of a tenth. We have half tenth. How are you watering your, your beans planting with a grill? Uh, uh, poly piping beds. We make six foot wide beds. We make a six five foot wide bed. Yeah, five foot wide. Uh, just now, uh, this fall, we actually rushed our burning, uh, and we had more straw than we normally have. So we got our old Sukup cultivator out instead of using the better roller. And uh, it's uh, 40 foot wide, set on five foot centers, but I set the auto steer on 45 foot. And I pulled it with a 380 case half track and I run 10 to 11 mile an hour. And, uh, and then Chris was pulling, they was either pulling a disc chain or a turbo till one time ahead of me. And it let us get all our bean ground bedded. We take a small disc normally and disc our levees and then disc our edges and land, land plant our levees and land <coughs> plant our butts. Now this year, while it was dry, we actually smoothed our levees before we burnt the straw right up the combine. But normally we can't do that. But that's the pretty well the process that we do. What are you doing to your beans to prepare to plant rocks next year? Uh, we'll, uh, for years, we pulled a Kelly Dine and that was it. And we felt like uh, uh, in our type of soil, uh, we could go out there even after a heavy rain and machines wouldn't cut down. I could dig in a water puddle and it would actually be firm dirt under the water puddle. So we, on our bean ground, we've actually reverted, went back to a disc. We try to pull a disc behind a combine and then pull a turbo or the, the Kelly Diamond and then that's it. Come springtime. Uh, this past spring, we did pull a field cultivator to help warm the soil up and maybe help on some chemical, but a lot of years, you know, and if it's this stays, we just plant. 
run a, a shallow compaction issue, run a 100% Kelly Diamond chain. So yeah, I think we did that for approximately five years, uh, just a strictly a Kelly diamond. And then, uh, and then actually on one of our Kelly diamonds now, we put a sharp display. At Single two. tooth. No, ours is a Butte disc, comes from a Butte in Australia. It's similar, but it's a little bit closer space. Uh, in 2017, uh, our rice ground hadn't been touched. We smoothed up our levees this spring. We pulled this uh, diamond with the butte disc chains one time, bed it, planted our soybeans. Uh, it made us for a fast soybean planting. We was like I say, we was all done planting beans on May 24th because it was just a trip with the disc chains, a trip with the better, and then the planter, and, and we was out of there. Before you started drilling soybeans, did you plant any on rope? Yeah, I used to plant all of them. What's your difference in yield between what you're doing that way? Uh, it's it no, better. If maybe you're... better. Uh, a lot of farmers in our area have actually went back to uh, row beans because there's more and more corn being produced and uh, row beans are doing well in our area. We have uh, uh, neighbors and people we know east of is actually raising high yielding soybeans on wide rows. What row spacing on your, on your drill are you running? Seven and a half on the grain <coughs> drill, 30 inch on the row. What, uh, and same on beans? Mm -hmm. Corn, I mean, your rocks and beans, you leave the same? Yeah. We do both. Uh, we'll plug uh, one of the, the John Deere drill, we'll plug every other opening, make it a 14 inch row. The Sunflower drill, we leave it so. Uh, shortly, as row rice comes more and more into play, We'll more than likely throw this system out the window and we won't do anything. We'll just bid. That's all we're going for, just a rebed if anything and plant since we're rotating the soybeans anyway. We're going to get into 100 we're going to be right away we're going to be hundred percent grow rise on our slope ground. We'll do no trips. Been one trip with a better, if that, that's it. Do you not have trouble in your zero grades with scalding beans? I really have to, be watch huh? you have to watch it. Have to we bend that ground too. Mm -hmm. And I know, uh, depending on your soil type, that can be a bad issue. <laughs> Well, be pretty on the time's up. We'll, we'll stay and answer questions, but if you need to get your next presentation. Thank remember, you. Remember your uh, CCA credits are back if you haven't signed up for them. On behalf of Sam Atwell, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>